Okay, we're gonna start. It's 3 p.m. Welcome. Uh, we've made a lot of progress last time. And we're gonna do more progress this time. So we should get going. Where's the chat? It's here. So I'm gonna just uh, put the, the document with all the links to the resources. So I've put it in the chat right there. Um, and it's a kind of a summary of, of the past steps we have made. And uh, yeah, it provides every, everything you need to, to follow along. So for today, uh, let, me, let me close a couple of tabs. All the tabs actually. Yeah, so for today, um, we're going to try and, and display in Giphy the results of the uh, of the text mining we have made in the past um, sessions. So in the past sessions, we have uh, written some code that um, uh, extracts and ranks the top uh, words in the textual attributes of the nodes of a network. So to be to say it in a simpler way, if you have a network, it has nodes. In in your nodes, you can have attributes. You know the columns in the data laboratory in Gephi. Uh, so the uh, these attributes of your nodes, they can be text, right? And the example we take is the one of a, a, a network of Twitter users. Each user has a, a biography uh, on Twitter, which is written in text. So that what we have written uh, in the past ep episodes is the code that takes all the biographies of all these nodes and it it just uh, chunks these biographies into words and then it counts which words are the most frequent and it ranks these words from the most frequent to the least frequent okay that's where we are and let me show you the code for that uh, so maybe time to switch screen sharing so that's the plugin if you want more details on you know what is this code about uh, please look at the descriptions of the past videos they are on YouTube and I have made a very detailed like minute per minute description of, of the videos so you can really jump to the part that uh, that explains you know uh, what is this code about? So that's the code for the plugin. It has many folders. The one where the code is is there. No, no, no that's not the proper plugin. Sorry, that's the web publish plugin. Sorry, it's up there, I think. Is it? Okay, that's not this one, so let me close, close it. Okay, I've not opened the project, I thought. So I'm gonna open the project. It's gonna show you how it works. It's super slow. Uh, so the project is elsewhere, it's there actually.
Oops, not there. No, no. There. And then uh, to, to, to give you plugin development. Yeah, that's this one. And inside this thing, you have one module, which is one plugin. I open it. That's the one we work on, the Lexical Explorer plugin. Okay, all good for you. Uh, and so I was saying that the code is in the source package. And it's there, network. So the this file that I just opened there, this file is where we have the code that takes a network and, uh, you know, finds the top words of a textual attribute. Uh, and the file above this one is the one that uh, creates a panel, so a window that we can see in Giphy. Uh, we did that in the first episodes, actually, of the, uh, of the plugin, of the live coding. So what we need is whatever happens Whatever happens in this, you know, word extraction uh, code should, you know, the results should appear in the window. So I'm going to think with you about how to do that. And I have not thought about it during the week uh, because I'm busy uh, writing a paper and giving classes. So uh, I didn't think of that and that's what we're going to do together today. So as I say, this one is about, um, you know, uh, showing the, the a window in Giphy and at the moment it's completely empty. There is just silly, you know, hello, welcome to my plugin. And where is the code that creates that? Well, actually you just click on source and you see it. It's, this is the code that generates the, uh, that generates the, the window. So, um, I mean, I'm just really thinking aloud. Maybe what we want is a button in the window. Wait, let me show you the window. Maybe we need a button. Let me put a button somewhere. Like we would have a button there, uh, something where we would click, so run. So the user would click on run. And instead of having this silly thing there, we would have a list of top words when the user would click on run. And that's it. Um, of course, we would add many other things later, but for the first version for today, uh, you know, that would be nice. Uh, and what we could have as well is a drop down menu where the user would select which column, uh, wh what is the attribute where the text is, you know, because the, the the each network has different attributes so we we uh, we need to ask the user uh, what is the name of the column of the attribute where the text the text is uh, so maybe we could add a drop down menu um, let me show you where you know in in uh, so that's netbeans and on the right, you have all the uh, user interface uh, elements we can use. And I'm sure there's a drop down menu somewhere. I mean, uh, it must be right in front of me. Uh, label, alt button, toggle button, check. Oh, maybe list. Maybe that's a list. The list is not exactly that. Uh, 
Well, we'll leave that for later because I don't want to spend a full hour just uh, getting bored with how to create a drop down menu. Uh, instead, we're going to really uh, do what we see uh, there. You know, like uh, clicking on run and it gives you a, a list of top words. So we're going to give it a proper name, run. So this is this is where you have the properties of the of the UI elements and this is where you can modify them. So let me zoom there. So the name of the button is G button, uh, J, sorry, J button as, as, a, as a default. Uh, we're going to change it to run button. Uh, the event is when, so, you know, when you, this is where you can create a lot of actions for any when anything happens. So what we want is to associate an action when there is a click on the button. So action performed is when there is a click, uh, right? So we're gonna, yeah, uh, we're gonna, just doing that is, is gonna create a, a method or you could call it a function that is will that will be called run button action performed it's going to be an empty function but inside this function we can just write the lines of codes that will trigger uh you know the lines we have written last week that take the text from the attribute and compute the most frequent terms so that's it as you see it has created and I'm going to zoom in for you. It has created, uh, I think it's better here. Yeah, it has created oops, a function there, which is empty, right? This function will be triggered each time somebody will click on the button. And what will it do? Anything you write there. So, uh, let's we want it to run you know we want the function to run this file the file we have written last week and last weeks actually uh, so we don't want the we don't want that it imports a file right the import of a file was just it's just for us to test the plugin, uh, but of course the user would have a network already in Giphy, doesn't need to import anything. So I'm gonna cut the code into two parts. The import code, yeah, the import code code and the, the, the data processing code. So as you see, I've just closed with this curly bracket there I've just, can I zoom in a bit for you? I've just closed the function that starts there and which is called import from file and it's fine with me, we're gonna keep it. But the code that comes after, uh, it's now it's just uh, sitting in uh, nowhere, so we're gonna insert it, so public, it's a public function, void because it returns nothing then we can give it a name to this function um you know uh post or you know mine and sort textual attribute so we could it could take as a parameter the name of this attribute so the name is a string uh so attribute name and then the method starts with an opening curly brace. And then it complains that yes, it doesn't know what a graph controller is because we defined it before. 
so we can just copy paste the exactly that to here okay I suppose it's not perfectly okay but uh, looks 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 fine so okay this first line of these first lines of code are just you know uh, um, they are useful to basically uh, take hold of the graph as it is opened in in uh, Giphy and then we're gonna uh, get the column from the attribute so attribute it's not description attribute it's attribute to be analyzed Oops. and take the graph model get the node table and then get the column but not description you know the column that has been given as a parameter to the function uh fine and then it will do all of that uh, every, everything we have done last week so why does it complain about description here tokenize there is an unreported io exception so let's that's okay that's fine I, I should change my code so that it doesn't do that but that's for another time perfect oh maybe we should also add the language that would be nice so let's add the language uh lang oof well, okay, and we're going to assume there is just one language. Uh, oh, that's not good. Maybe there are more than one languages. Uh, it's not a good choice, but what I'm going to do is assume there is always... Uh, we're going to always remove the stop words for English plus the stop words in the language, uh, you know, that the user has, has specified. So it's not Spanish anymore, it's second language. That seems pretty, at least, interesting, not super robust. Uh, but interesting. Okay, then the code works. Then we're gonna take the most, the ten most frequent uh, terms. So maybe we should make it a parameter. So I'm just moving up. Max number of terms that's an integer and instead of, that, of having the 10 uh, hard coded there oops you don't see it we can just put the parameter okay um, okay so the question is Oh yes, yes. Uh, what is this function returning? It's gonna, in my view, it could just return, a, you know, a text string, a text string where each line is a term, and between brackets we have the number of occurrences of this term. So let's do that. So first, let's do that. Yeah, it's not gonna return nothing is going to return a string this function second 
we don't want this thing just to print up in the console this thing we want to actually we want uh, the string we want to have we want to have the top most frequent terms in a string so we have a string builder in java which is a pretty nice thing it helps build string in a way that uh, that is memory efficient because string manipulation can be pretty uh, it can slow down things so a string builder helps in this case and so for each text fragment that we collected we add it we append it to our string builder append so what do we append we append the term itself so the key then we append you know i i said we're gonna display the term and then between brackets the number of occurrence so that's what we add here the opening bracket is there then we append the number of occurrences which is there tf get value tf for text fragment yes pretty nice and then we close the parentheses and then we add a line break which uh, is either you know uh, backslash n or uh, it depends uh, it depends either that or uh, the html for uh, you know uh, uh, a break i don't i'm not exactly sure anyway so and then it's going to stop when we have reached the maximum term and then it's going to break the loop and then we can return the function is going to return the string builder as a string okay so uh, i'm pretty happy with that so now we have just to call this function uh from the run button uh which was there right so we want to instantiate the file or the class where our method is network importer by the way it's not a network importer anymore right it's something else so we should rename it let me rename it first Right, it's not an. This file has two things. Uh, so refactor, rename. Come on, it's super slow. Uh, so we're gonna call it a uh, top term extractor. Top term extractor, fine. the refactoring usually it's like that um, okay so I was saying we call it now top term extractor what's the name of this variable uh, I'm super conservative but Um, now in Java you can code differently, but I'm going to show you. But I'm still uh, quite old school. Okay, so that's how you instantiate the class in Java, but you can do it in a simpler way. You can just say, you can just call it a var, which would be more, uh, you know familiar to many of you okay let's call it a var i never do that but maybe i can get used to it and then 
we launch the method associated to this class, uh, which is mine and sort textual attributes. So the name, hey, the name is the one, well, we're going to hard code the, the name of the attribute uh, just for these testing uh, steps. Uh, then the lang will be English, en, and then we want the 10 most frequent terms. So it's going to, why, oh yeah, it also, again, it wants a kind of, yeah, fine, never mind. You know, in Java, you have this thing where you catch errors. Uh, it creates these ugly blocks of code, but um, you get used to it. Uh, so, okay, it has launched the function, and the function returns a string, but the string, we have not stored it anywhere, so let's do it. Uh, top terms as a string. And now what we want, I suppose, is to display this string in there, let me switch back to, you know, the, uh, the how, how do you call that, the uh, aperçu in French, uh, preview. To the preview of our plugin, we would like the top terms to appear there. So what is the name of this big label? Uh, again, we can find it there, uh, no, there. Uh, so code, it's called G label one, which is not super useful. We're going to call it uh, placeholder for top terms. It's an ugly name, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but it works for me. And so I'm switching back to the source, you know, the code behind this preview, behind this thing. And I'm sure it's not going to work, but, uh, you know, so this is the label, the name, and we're going to set text. Suppose we can do that, set text. Well, the top terms are string. Uh, that's what NetBeans suggests. I mean, NetBeans has auto-completed what we wanted to do. It's pretty useful. And I, know if it's, I don't know if it's going to work, but it's, it seems pretty OK to me. Uh, maybe it's not going to refresh. That's what I fear. I mean, many things can go wrong, but we can try it. Before we do that, I see an error there. Yeah, because basically, do you see it? Yeah. So when the Lexical Explorer top component, so the window is being created, uh, we had done that, this thing here, uh, which is nice, but we don't do that anymore in any case. So I'm just going to remove this line. We don't need to import a file. It's just, uh, uh, just for test purposes. So I remove that. So are we clear now? No, we still have, do you see it? No, you don't see it. Oh, it has disappeared. We had a, an error sign, it has disappeared. So now I have to remember how do we compile and launch uh, a plugin in Giphy. I think, let me, I think I have written that in the, you know, in the document that I have put in the chat. So let me retrace my steps with you. Yeah, I'm sure I, I did that. Come on, it's super slow. So to run, yeah, that's, that's nice. To run the plugin in Giphy, you do clean and build on the plugin, and then on the command line, you do, 
Yeah, so let's do that together. First, we back to give to NetBeans. And we select the plugin and we do clean and build. Right click on the name, clean and build. It's going to compile the code we have written. And it takes, uh, it's super quick. Uh, oops, whoa, whoa, whoa. A window. Oh my, I have a, I have a big window opening in the wrong place. Yeah, that's better. I want to show it to you. Do you see it? Yeah. So this is the plugin compiling. It should be quick because we have uh, not much code in it. Honey, come on. Okay, that's really ugly. I know what happens there. Oh, that's ugly. So what it means is that my uh, code from the, the code from my dependencies, you know, the libraries that I have imported in the code, they have been written in, a, I have written them in a version of Java, which is more recent than the version of the code of the plugin we are using, and it's in incompatible. Oh, I hate that. Maybe, maybe that can, I don't know, let's see. Maybe that can be fixed by uh, upgrading or you know, augmenting. Hmm. So what did Mathieu Bastian say about the versions for the plugin? Uh, let me, oh, he had a Slack comment on that. Uh, that's complicated. Uh, Surprised we can't. Let's try something. Uh, let's try something. So I'm I'm upgrading the version of Java that the plugin is using to the GDK seventeen, which allows me. I suppose, yeah, to move on the, oops, that's here, which means we can use Java up to, well, you don't see it here, up to version 17. I'm not exactly sure it's going to, and, and now if I clean and build, everything should be my dependencies are have been written, I think, in GDK 17. Let's see. I'm pretty pessimistic. It 
it could run there, but then That's very slow, my dear. Okay, we have different types of... We have, uh, okay, the, the error has been uh, uh, fixed, but we have other types of errors. Top term structure line 95. But what does it complain about? Why is it complaining? Found row type array list. Missing type arguments for generic class array list. So weird. Uh, no, I don't get it. Why is it complaining with this silly stuff? Just gonna wait for it to finish the, the scanning by NetBeans of my code to see if it detects anything strange. Uh, and I'm gonna redo the cleaning and the building. So I'm working in a dry, uh, from the start I, I have this, I have this project in a drive, you know, a Google Drive on my, I'm going to close the project and move it outside of the drive because I'm, I'm a bit afraid that I'm going to, I'm running into uh, issues that have nothing to do with, with my code, but it, might have to do with the fact that I'm uh, the files on my computer are hard to access because they are on a drive. So let me just do a very quick copy paste where I'm well, just in my documents. very quick Let me show you the progress here so it's, I'm just moving my plugin right it's not big 105 megabytes but it's enough that when win, uh, Windows has uh, you know issues come on it's just uh,
time for our coffee, as they say. Come on, super simple. How to move 250 megabytes in uh, one hour? What should I do? Should I should I cancel? Why is taking so long? I think I'm gonna cancel. I'm just afraid that if I cancel, I'm already. I'm gonna cancel. I can't wait forever. Okay, cancelled. I'm gonna do something else. which is which should be quicker Okay, so it took uh, 10 seconds. I just removed the target folders, basically. Now I can open these plugins. And my documents. Okay, it's open, and now if I do clean and build, I should not be bothered by the previous uh, problems. Other problems will happen, but not, not these ones. So as you see, I have displaced it on my C drive, which I hope will make things quicker. So it says I have an unreported XML. 
perception. I think I understand why, but it's not exactly clear. I think I understand. I need to compile my dependencies. Let's do that. Uh, it's in functions family, and I need to compile things there. So I've made a little change. So I'm just recompiling uh, my Yumigen dependencies, especially the ones that contain stop words, because I've made some changes. Uh, well, before I before I started this stream, and it seems these changes have not been taken into account, which would account for the errors we see. I'm just. Compiling again my these dependencies, hoping that it will uh, hoping that it will stop causing issues in the plugin that makes use of these dependencies. Super slow. The again the the OBS uh, software I use to stream is taking uh, a lot of resources, which is good because you can en enjoy this video without uh, lag. Come on, one minute. there I see I've seen a lot of errors oh but we don't care okay so the the these dependencies have been have been uh, uh, kind of updated so maybe maybe they will stop causing issues now. I mean, we don't have the issues anymore, but we have other other weird stuff. Why it's not supposed to complain about that? Uh, oops. I mean, this line line of code is perfectly cashier. So why does it complain? Never seen that before. That's why 
kind of strikes me as a I'm I'm just gonna I suppose something that I could have done wrong is you know this I told you about the VAR where is the VAR stuff? I told you about the VAR uh, keyword which is there and I'm I wonder if these VAR are actually I'm gonna be super conservative again and I'm back there why is it complaining I mean not mad right it's, I'm completely allowed to do that super strange It smells like Java version incompatibilities. Checked conversion. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Okay, let's let's take the let's take let's do some googling so it's a warning right it's not an error let's do that Long, so that's fine. Missing type argument. I'm looking at the second error missing type arguments for our class array list. Never had that before. That's a warning as well, so it shouldn't. It shouldn't prevent, yeah, exactly. It shouldn't prevent the code from ah, unsupported class file major version sixty one. So sixty one is what. Java versions. Sixty-one eight seventeen. Oh, shit. I think it's just eleven. Java eleven. Ooh, we are in a bad place. Because if I take stop words, you know, my library for stop words, can I move it back to, to 11? 
increased. Uh, what's the project? Oh yeah, there's a pump pro there's a parent file for my dependencies. Let me, let's open it. So I, I'm gonna check if my dependencies could be downgraded to Java 11 to re avoid these mistakes. And that's in the pom file of my... Hmm. Okay, interesting. The, the version of Java is not declared. Oh, it's declared in functions. It's declared in a pom file, which is even more above. Seventeen, oh my god. So maybe I could just what if I override maybe regulate, but what if I override Properties. Properties, properties, properties. I'm going to override the properties to downgrade. Then great to live in just for the Yumicon dependencies. Not even sure it works this way. And in any case, I might have some source. Maybe it's gonna work. I suppose not, but who knows? No, I know it's not gonna work because I have some uh, syntax. Oh, that's really painful. Uh, Seventeen as well. What if I don't go to eleven? What does it say? I'm sure it's going to complain somewhere. Let's try it. So I'm building my dependency for utilities using Java 11 instead of Java 17. And I see if it works. Okay, that works. What about stop words? Can I 
build it. Seems to work. So I end the tokenizer, the union tokenizer. Would need. Oh, I hope it works as well. Not, not sure at all. What I'm doing is sim simply downgrading the version of Java for this. Okay, and there we have an issue. Okay, just in one place. Yeah, of course. just have to change the syntax of my libraries so that they conform with Java 11 style of code. Not sure I'm obliged to do it, but I can't think of the proper way. Okay, the tokenizer would work in Java 11.
Okay, now if we start to clean the plugin, do we have more or less errors than before? Okay, we have warnings which are fair. Still, where is this class? Maybe the model and the tokenizer as well, okay. Okay, 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 okay. And the engrams, this one is going to be boring as well. bad not too long so as far as I can see I have downgraded all my dependencies to Java 11 which should satisfy Giphy Okay, so is the plugin compiling now? That would be superb because if we are 10 minutes past four.
food looks good. Looks good. Fantastic so far. Fantastic. The plugin has compiled and the errors were exactly the one we treated, which were that the dependencies I had coded and imported in the plugin were using Java 17 types of syntax while while Giphy is uh, at Java 11, so it doesn't compile and understand Java 17 type of syntax. So to, what I did in the past 20 minutes is opening my code from these dependencies and uh, compiling them down to Java 11. And yes, it fixed the issue. So now we can go with the last steps of the test, which is uh, which is which is which is uh, running Maven package on the uh, Giphy plugins parent uh, project. You know, I'm just following. Let me show. You. I'm just following what we had seen here from our past episodes. Maven package and then uh, the run. So let's do that. Oops. So running Maven package. Oops, Maven package. Hopefully that works in one shot. Um, it might take ages because I've removed the target packages just to make it easier to you know move my project from from Google Drive to a uh, to a local drive. Let's see. I suppose it's going to take ages. Yeah, that's where it's going to unpack. I suppose if he's By the way, as you see, I still use Giphy's, uh, Giphy version 0.9.7, even if uh, a few days ago, Giphy 0.10 has been released. So I should just update, yeah, this, this is where it's gonna take time. Uh, I should just update the version of Giphy to, to 0.10 um, to make sure it's just uh, available to the latest uh, to the users uh, of the latest version, but that can wait. I suppose that can wait the one we are finished. Yeah, we're gonna spend a minute or two there. Should I grab a coffee? Maybe you're right, because it's really just. Uh, it's really just uh, Giphy getting in unzipped, which is not super exciting. So I'm back with a coffee.
Wow, not finished yet. Crazy. Or maybe it has. No, not finished. Should I say um, well nothing because it's coming great and then uh, then we run Giphy we run Giphy uh, with our plugin inside it took five minutes to package Giphy uh, just to repeat you do that just once. Right. And so Giphy is launching now and hopefully the plugin is inside and when we when we click on run it's gonna it's gonna analyze the it's gonna analyze the textual attributes of the nodes of our networks. So slow. Come on, come on. Do you imagine how slow that would be in Python? I see Giphy opening. On my other screen, I'm gonna when it's finished, I'm gonna, you know, uh, slide it to where you can see it. Giphy has opened. It's just takes take its time. Okay, you can see it here. That's Giphy. So we need to open a, a file where there is a description module. Uh, module where there's a description attribute. Why? Because if you remember in NetBeans, let me show you. Uh, show you there. Uh, where were they? Yeah. Uh, when we're gonna click on the button, it's gonna take the, the the network that is currently opened and it's gonna extract the top the top terms in its description column so uh, we have to have a, a this a network with a description column so I was lucky let me let me check outside of the screen. I just want to check something before telling you. Yes, 
Yes, yeah, so with Flef from uh, what is so Flef is a cartographer. He's a consultant in social data science in France, and he does uh, cartographies, maps of uh, social networks, and uh, uh, using Giphy. Uh, as far as I can understand, he, he uses. Twitter data, but maybe other things as well. I'm going to put his bio and link in, in the in the resources. But uh, Flef, Flef has sent me a network of the of the Twitter accounts that the New York Times is following. Uh, so that can be useful to. Uh, to play with our plugin, to test our plugin. So I'm just gonna find this uh, this network of the Twitter accounts that the New York Times is following, and I, I had a look at it. Basically, the New York Times Twitter account is following New York Times employees. Okay, got it. So you should see now in Giphy the network opening. It has 292 accounts, and that's a big messy hairball. So in order, uh, okay, we see here on the left. Oops. We see our lexical explorer, right? With our run button. And at the moment, it has this silly sentence. But if things go well, when we click on run, it should analyze, you know, it should analyze the description column for our nodes. Because there is a description column there. Let me zoom in. You see description. So it should take all the text from this column and count which terms are the most frequent. And it should then display them uh, there. So let's click on run and see what happens. Of course, not going to work, but, but we can hope. So nothing happens, maybe because the thing is running. Let me switch back to. Uh, I'm gonna switch back to NetBeans to see if if we see error messages in it. So it's output, 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 output. Oops. Output. Okay, we see nothing there. Nothing there. So I've clicked on run, oh, and zero node, zero nodes, zero links. So it means that I have made a mistake in the way the, in the, way the existing uh, network is being taken into account. So it's fine, and it should be very easy to fix. So that's fluff, by the way. Who provided me the the New York Times account? So, Giphy Toolkit uh, demos. We're gonna find a code that helps us uh, load the existing network instead of just uh, scrapping it as as we just did. Uh, yeah, filtering maybe. So I don't want to import the file. I just want to. Oh, I, maybe I could just look at the code of of my exist of my uh, other plugin. Giphy plugins.
Wet Parish. Module Source. Uh, where was it? Where was it? I suppose here. Uh, not here actually. Maybe more here. Uh, no. Come on. Yeah, something like here. You know the simple lines of code that. Okay, that's here. These lines of codes help you get hold of the graph as it is opened. Uh, well, it looks like exactly like. No, no not exactly. Very fine, and then and then that's it, just this one here. Perfect. Okay, so I should leave Giphy here. No, what a mistake. Shit. Never mind. Uh, I just clean and build the plugin. Everything is thrown on my computer. Finished compiling or almost. Come on. Is done so I can do packaging.
that should be quick because we don't have to we don't have to unpack uh, Giphy again so that should be relatively quick look at that fantastic hurry up yes thank you superb come on super one it Ali, come on. Okay, finished and took 25 seconds. I mean, a minute in total. And now we run Giphy with the modifications I just made to the plugin. Hopefully, it will uh, it will uh, just uh, yeah take into account the the network being currently opened in the workspace of Giphy. Giphy is opening much quicker than before, or is it just me? Well, not completely quickly. Yes, you can do it. Yes, pretty quick. That's it. Oh no, yeah, the, the window is here. Uh, yeah, I opened the New York Times Friends Network. And then I do run, right? Ah, it worked. Look at that. In in a, in a snap. So New York Times is the most frequent, followed by Times, followed by 1 in 24, followed by Reporter, followed by Author. Fantastic! Uh, it works. Now uh, we just have to... Uh, well, you know, the line breaks didn't work. You know, you remember I, I introduced line breaks between entries uh but uh, that didn't work i knew it was probably not going to work so uh, i can fix that uh but that's for next time but at least it's ordered per uh, you know frequency new york times first followed by times followed by reporter followed by author oh and it makes me think i should probably uh uh put everything in lowercase so that uh, but you know it works and I w it's super fast. Super fast, interesting. Yeah, so it, I mean, I find it interesting because it would suggest that performance is not gonna be such a big issue after all. I mean, if it's that fast, uh, I'm pretty reassured because we can do, uh, anyway, we, we have, a margin of progress on, on on things we can do to to make it faster but it seems that we are not too constra constrained for a network of 300 nodes it was like like in a snap okay thank you for following uh sorry for having been over time and uh i'm gonna post the replay on youtube the the big thing that slowed us down was the uh, the fact that I used libraries that were coded with features that were specific to Java 17. And when I compiled my plugin using these libraries, it complained because it said that Giphy is, can run only with Java libraries up to Java 11, so I had to open my libraries and and make them put them back to Java 11, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, kind of norm, uh, and then it worked. <laughs> but that was uh, apart from that, it was pretty. Uh, 
pretty successful, right? See you next week. Uh, the steps for next week would be to... I don't know. Uh, continue working on the interface. Uh, we're going to add a, a drop-down menu for the so that the user can select on which column they want to run the the the, the text mining and we're going to fix these line breaks uh, and may, maybe other stuff but that's oh and the language as well people would be able to choose the language they want to use to remove the stop words thank you veronica thanks as always for being here it's really encouraging uh yeah and as you see it's slow we, but we definitely make progress i mean it's it's it works next time should be i already say that but next time should be pretty satisfying because we're going to do some simple improvements to the ui that should really uh, uh have an immediate immediate impact on how uh, comfortable this is to use the plugin okay thanks a lot See you next week, hopefully. Bye-bye.